now. Good afternoon. It is my great pleasure to welcome you, also in the name of Irene Gilyashvili and Gerhard Wolf, to the first event of this afternoon, the lecture of Ether Edi Sherashvili, organized in the framework of our Georgia lecture series. The time of this lecture has been slightly anticipated. Normally our series starts at 3 p.m. because we have a second presentation afterwards on Armenia organized by the seminar on Armenian and Eastern Christian art, which is a beautiful coincidence. So maybe you wish to join both events. I'm delighted to introduce our today's speaker, um, Eter Edisherashvili. Um, she is an art historian and PhD student at the State Academy of Art in Tbilisi. She is furthermore researcher at the George Shubinashvili National Research Center for Georgian Art History and Heritage Protect, uh, Protection, as well as at the Corneli Kikilice, Kikilice Georgian National Center of Manuscripts. Her field of research involved the nomination of Georgian historical documents and manuscripts from the medieval and early modern times the intersections in Georgian medieval and early modern art and their study in historical, cultural, religious and secular contexts. Within the framework of her PhD thesis, Eta worked at the University of Heidelberg at the Institute of Byzantine Archaeology and Art History in 2018 within a Coimbra Group Scholarship pro Program. She worked at the British Library in London and at the Soleimani a li library in Istanbul with an educational grant for doctoral students from the Shota Rustaveli Foundation, uh, for Shota Rustaveli National Science Foundation, sorry. Eta worked on several very important research projects. For instance, from 2014 to 2016, she worked on a database of the miniatures from Georgian illuminated manuscripts from the 9th to the 19th century. In 2015, she worked on a project on the German cultural heritage in Georgia, and from 2015 to 2018 on a project on Tauglajetian literary heritage. Since 2020, she is furthermore engaged in a project entitled Georgia and the Byzantine Commonwealth, Politics, Culture and Identity on, on the Imperial Frontiers. Since 2021, Eta Edisherashvili is furthermore a member of the research group Jus Illuminatum, an international research team studying illuminated legal manuscripts. Eta has got several awards and published numerous articles related to the various projects she worked on. I just mentioned the most recent one published in 2019 and entitled Political and Artistic Trends in Late Medieval and Early Modern Georgian Illuminated Cartas, published in the book Illuminierte Urkunden, Beiträge aus Diplomatik, Kunstgeschichte und Digital Humanities, herausgegeben von Gabriele Barz und Markus Gneis, im Beiheft zum Archiv für Diplomatik, Schriftgeschichte, Siegel und Wappenkunde. Eka, um, Eta, um, also her presentation of today is focused on the same topic, the Georgian Illuminated Charters. It is entitled Late Medieval Georgian Illuminated Documents, State of Study and Research Perspectives. Thank you very much, Eta, to being with us and to, sh to share your research with us. Please, um, I kindly invite you to share your screen. Thank you. The discussion will then be uh, moderated by Irene. Yeah. Mm, firstly, let me thank you very much for a very nice intro production and um, what I want to say before I start I want to say a huge thank you all of you for coming for your interest and especially in this very difficult and uh, stressful time so I'm very very thankful uh, let me uh, start. Um. Illuminated historical documents are among the least studied works of Georgian medieval art. They are of great importance for the study of medieval Georgian history, culture, and art. Uh, culture and art. Uh, though the number of surviving documents is not large, there are about 30 items dating from the 15th century till the beginning of 19th century. The documents are of two kinds, uh, illuminated documents and charters with ornamentation. 
although there are a small number of the documents without any decoration where the text itself plays and calligraphy plays the roles of the decoration. I won't discuss them in my paper today in my talk. Among them, most representative and richly illuminated part are royal documents issued by the kings and the queens. Also, there are documents issued by the nobles and uh, in certain cases, Catholic and bishops. Uh, uh, the recipients of the deeds were nobles as well as the peasants and various monasteries. The surviving documents present charters of mercy. Charters of mercy uh, grant uh, blood money, blood ransom, and purchase. The illuminated historical documents in Georgia are preserved in large numbers in Tbilisi, Corneli Kekelitsi National Center of Manuscripts, which is the largest depository of Georgian manuscript heritage in Georgia, in the National Archive of Georgia, Kutaisi State Historical Museum, Gori Historical and Ethnographical Museum, etc. It is difficult to provide credible assumptions about the period in which the practice of illumination of documents began in Georgia due to the lack of available data. It's also hard to establish the factors that led to the initiation of the practice. There is no some evidence found in late medieval Georgian historical sources about the documents in general, but there as nothing is said about the illumination. The only source where the indication about the illuminated documents is Jean Jardin's report, who visited Georgia in 1672, noted that when he delivered to the King Shahnavaz of Kartli the firman sent to him by the Shah of Persia, the delighted king summoned the nobles and ordered a copy of the documents to be made. We have never seen Furman as brilliant and honorable like it is. Noblemen were excited to see the golden plated script and decoration on the margins of the documents. The king, that the king Shachna, was ordered to make a copy of this deed. The earliest preserved illuminated documents uh, date from 15th century and were issued by Georgian kings and nobles. Several charters, unfortunately, now considered to be lost, are known through the old publications. The charter, the first one is the charter given to the Turkey family by King Constantine must have been decorated with the images of the king and his sons. It's for, from 15th century as well. The charter given to Helia's sister, Sepse Pashvili family by King Bagrat of Abhazeti in 1457 must have been also decorated with the image of the king on the top. The third one is the charter of the nation by Georgian noble Kautar Lakwaste to the cathedral of Svetlitzhoveli with the line there representing that the top is also considered to be lost. The charter of King Alexander II of Kaheti to the St. Catherine Mount Sinai Monastery Metokian in Tbilisi with images of Mount Sinai and the burning bush. The, and the last one, uh, the Imam Kul charters uh, dated at the early, 11, early uh, 18th century is also to be uh, considered as a lost. It appears uh, fortunately in uh, uh, Dimitri Emako's photograph and in Gregory Gagarin's copies. From the beginning, for a long time, the purpose of the study of historical documents was purely historical, and art historians had no interest in document decoration. The first attempt of study documents was made by the Georgian geographer and art historian Wachos de Bagradiani in 18th century description of Georgian kingdom and the geographical atlas. The critical analysis and historical um, uh, documents and charters was initiated by the Georgian historian Ivan Javakishvili, author of Georgian documents, studies and diplomatics, and the founder of the discipline. After that, many researchers have studied text and paleography of the historical documents at 
have text published it works by Ektimeta Aishvili, Tedor Rodania, Alexandre Hahanashvili, Dimitri Bakradze, Ivane Jawahishvili, Sarkis Gakabadze, Rednishvili, Tina Enukid, Valerian Silaka, another Shoshiashvili, Istoretolism, Ziasukulaze, Darjan Kliashvili, Temu Jojo, and Tiakartolishvili, etc. Many of them. Unlike historical and paleographical studies of the documents, their illumination left behind the attention and the paintings of the documents appeared as one of the less studied artistic phenomena from late medieval Georgian art. The reason was one, on the one hand, that the strong interest to its first function as a historical source and then uh, the closed repositories in Soviet period where the material was not accessible for everyone. So the large group of scholars did not know about even their existence. All has changed on the last years and the material is more accessible for the public and of course for scholars than it was before. The first paper dedicated to the decoration of historical documents was concerned with bilingual Persian Georgian and Persian ornamentated documents by Georgian scholar Elena Machawariani in 1972. And the Persian type uh, and the second um, publication in 1987 by Georgian scholar Sara Barnavelli presents works of David Kartveli, Bejiashvili, the painter of the King Solomon of Emirati. In 2011, the following catalog illuminated historical documents from the depositories of Georgia was published by Georgian scholar Darijan Kliashvili, where a large number of illuminated documents from the depositories of Georgia is presented with introductionary texts about the issuers, then the issues rise in documents illumination and a short annotation. As Georgian archives and museums do not provide a special database of illuminated charters with fundamental inventory works and precise description of material, the catalog is an important input for the future works. What do we have now are catalogs completed in the Soviet period, which was followed directly to the time after the documents were collected and placed at the collections in different depositories after the 19th century. The best conditions between them have the catalogs of Corneli Kekelite National Center manuscripts, which provide more information about the documents than others. But still they have been completed many years ago and they are still handwritten. In many cases, there is no information given about the decoration of documents. The next contribution was made in 2019 when one of the conferences dedicated to the antiquity of Kaheti region in Georgia, Georgian scholar Nino Chihvadze presented the paper discussing the royal images uh, portrait from one of the most significant documents, Imam Kulihan Charter from 18th century. The presentation, uh, the name was Some Aspects of Cultural Identity from the 18th Century Royal Painting According to Akura Ninotsminda Charter. All these works are important, promising contributions for the orientation into the material and raise new questions concerning the artistic phenomena. However, they do not address a wide array of interdisciplinary questions associated with illuminated manuscripts and their cultural and historical context. Historical documents still require an in-depth interdisciplinary study. It's essential to analyze a document in the light of the different fields of art, diplomatic and paleography. Illuminated documents are the complex phenomena with their texts, illuminations, seals, and stamps require interdisciplinary study, which involves historical and art historical research. Paintings of the documents became itself by the historical source, chronicle, as they reflect the historical development of the time and political and cultural events. Study of illuminated charters is especially valuable of having precise dates of their creation. In case of original document paintings uh, and note of restoration or later parts inserted in the text later. This becomes more significant and makes possible to differ discussion and reason research to the undated pieces of art in medieval Georgian art. 
the basic words uh, for the research is inventory and collecting the pool data about each document. On this stage, the necessary works of research is done. Through the last several years, the inventory work was made in the National Center of Manuscripts, National Archive of Georgia, Kutaisi Historical Museum, Tel Aviv Historical Museum, etc. And now it's still in the process the works at the National Center of Manuscripts. The process of exploration, so called rediscovering of the Georgian illuminated charters, is still active in not only Georgia but abroad as well. During the rediscovering process, we are several found several documents with the decoration, which were unknown for us before. Furthermore, a research catalog is done with full annotations, which includes the information about the text, issuer, recipient, uh, historical persons, and mentioned in the text about the style and iconography of the paintings materials of the documents and all the data and bibliography works about the documents from the beginning till now. Also, detailed information about the material and stages of restoration of the documents is provided. It is supposed to be that due to the historical and diplomatic relations between Georgia and its neighbors, Persian and Ottoman empires, and also with Russian, it's likely that the Georgian illuminated documents to be found in their archives or depositories. One of the, uh, one, uh, of the precious examples is located in Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg. And this one uh, is a proven one was that the search Georgian documents on abroad should be continued. The first but not the most important uh, are texts of the documents. After the inventory work, they are basements for the research as they make unique possibility for understanding the content of the document and they coordinate it with the decoration. Also, texts of the documents contain contemporary and later postscripts with our, which are additional sources. For, uh, about the document itself, its history and creation, and later so called movements. movements. Places uh, they have been kept in different times, issuer uh, or recipient, and sometimes they are a key point for answering questions uh, that arise concerning the paintings. Major uh, parts of the text is published, and some of them were published in different times by various scholars. All authors and publications from the beginning till now who read, describe, and publish the text in different times is worked out to compare the data, description content of the documents. This method was one of the good possibility for comparison whole material, and in some cases, data of the documents were different. For example, the inventory number, sometimes the name, and etc. And what is the most important, working on the text were very important to explore different kinds of information about the decoration of the charters. Texts make unique possibility for considering another important issue, relation between the text and the image of the documents. Precise reading of the text helps you to understand the images follow the text or not. What do images tell and what kind of relation they do they have with the illumination? There is clearly visible that during a few centuries, uh, the form and content of the charter's painting represent artistic trends from that time, political and cultural orientation of their issues and become a reflection in contemporary historical events. The leading tendency of the disintegrated king kingdoms and principalities of late medieval Georgia were controversial processes of the country and difficult foreign political um, conditions. The main reason of all those was Persian Ottoman expansion and deliverance from it became a stronger motivator for constant inspiration to the Christian post-Byzantine and Western world. Control and harsh historical condition was affected in different quality and intensity of social life, culture, and art. All these circumstances defined eclectic and controversial image of the paintings. If 15th century charters represent a synthesis of so-called professional, 
course presented in so-called vernacular artistic trends. 16th and 17th century samples represent strong influences of Islamic art, which are strongly displaced in appearance of bilingual Georgian Persian documents and their structure decoration. The majority of documents are dominated by the Persian tradition of miniature art, encompassing uh, all aspects of painting, beginning from decorative systems to painting techniques. Persian influence is suggested by multilinear color frames and abundance of blue and gold. However, these and uh, Persian documents still differ in terms and underlying artistic concept and the content. In Persian documents, the text and the ornament are equal value and the upper or top section is accentuated by the stamp or an ornament. Georgian documents, on the contrary, are characterized by the different treatment of the text and imagery. Most of them have Christian contents rendering by the issuer of the charter or an artist through the old Christian iconographic tense. Later, uh, uh, from the beginning of 18th century, inspiration of Islamic art is followed by sharing Western European artistic tendencies to the end of the century. Uh, and century shows strong influence uh, into the Western, um, a strong influence by Western European artistic tendencies, uh, structural decoration, style, as well as iconography. So sharing different artistic, trend, artistic trends would be the Islamic art style or uh, Western European tendencies. Georgian illuminated charters remade them in its own way, what defined is their individual imagery and place in late medieval Georgian art. Next to this, analyzing the illumination in context to current historic, cultural, and artistic context is very valuable, as they became a mirror of artistic processes influenced by this political circumstances. Artistic trends, style, and iconography of book illumination, wall painting, easel painting, embroidery, stone reliefs, numismatics, metalworks, uh, makes chance for revealing the characteristics of late medieval uh, secular art and point out the reasons of its cultural orientation. If before is a study of the exploration of late medieval Georgian arts were considered basically with their own, independently or in context of each other, entering the illumination of the documents will reopen new aspects and provokes new questions. The illumination heraldic devices uh, decorating the surviving charters reflecting in historical developments of the time became a key for revealing the relations between the issuers and recipients. So the comparative analysis of the text of the illuminations and the documents in the context of other written sources provides a unique possibility to study cultural alignment understanding preferences of their issuers and their attitudes uh, towards the recipients, social hierarchy of secular elites and even their psychological portraits. One of the vivid examples is, is uh, documents issued, uh, the document issued by the King Rostam of uh, Kartli, who was installed by the Shah to rule the Kartli. Most of the documents are bilingual, Georgian and Persian which is a result of the efforts aimed at adopting the practice of bilingual legal proceeding in 17th century East Georgia. The trend was encouraged by growing Persian expansion and symbolically represented the Shah's ownership of the Georgian lands. In the charters issued in 1657 uh, um, uh, with uh, the image of a cross set between peacocks and the inclusion of Christian symbols uh, in the charters of the Islamized Georgian kings mirrors the duality and complex psychological portrait of the issuer, as well as the worldview prevalent at the time and conflicted historical background of the kingdom of Kartli and Kahed. Decorating charters are found in the secular and clerical circles. Uh, also, the documents, uh, although the document painting documents of paintings uh, contain the religious images. So the special meaning has a study to um, uh, the illuminated documents in both secular and 
or religious context. Therefore, it's necessary to ensure that these documents are studied not only in relation with other works of secular art and written records, but also with works of religious art at the same period. Uh, this will allow to establish the way of two realms of art intersecting. Illuminated historical documents provide rich evidence for the study of trends in the secular art in medieval Georgia. Due to the historical and political developments through the centuries in Georgia, we have survived the lack of works of secular art. Our knowledge about the secular art, uh, royal palaces and their murals, official portraits and illuminated secular, manusc uh, secular manuscripts is very fragmented and basically known from recordings and historical sources as Georgian geographer uh, and historical historian Vahus de Bagradiani, travelers and missionaries visiting Georgia as Jean Chardin, Don Pietro, Vitabile, Arcangelo Lamberti. It makes difficult for presenting full picture of late medieval Georgian secular art and of course study of it as well. Consequently, exploring the illuminated documents turns out to be key point to fulfill the gaps of the knowledge about secular art in late medieval Georgia. Based on Georgian historical sources and current reports of travelers, Catholic missionaries, and merchants, it's possible to make an important contribution for the visualization of the lifestyle. Palaces of Georgian kings and nobles, their decoration discover hints about the secular artworks and artistic taste. In this condition, illumination of historical documents turns out to be key point of rethinking our knowledge about late medieval Georgian art. Filling the gaps and reopen various aspects of worldviews of aristocracy and provokes new questions of uh, the rethinking about the cultural identity markers. In the process of this study, it's also very important to work on sources and search information, evidence about the secular artworks and lifestyle of that time. In this process, both Georgian and also not Georgian records are very important. The important part of Georgian chronicles and sources is done, which includes the life of Kartli, the works of Bakhush de Bagradioni, Jean Chard and Don Pietro Avitabilia, Kajal Lambert, and also late medieval Georgian literature. And uh, now I'm still continuing to look for other recordings that aims uh, finding information about secular artworks and lifestyle of from that time. And last but not least, for the study of illuminated documents, one of the important parts takes the material and the form, shape of the documents and the techniques used for their creation. Looking through the path of the history of illumination, very interesting is the material, the parchment and the paper later. Also, the shape of the documents, which changes through the time and will rise from the long, medium size of which scrolls into longer documents and what is notable seems interesting and seen of time of their creation. The overview of the material gives a unique chance for the understanding various aspects of artistic processes in late medieval Georgia, relations between different fields of the art and their encounters, bearing in mind that the knowledge of medieval and early modern Georgian art is largely based on religious art. The study of illuminated charters characterized by the artistic diversity will contribute to the better understanding of the identity of Georgian art and its role in the historical and cultural processes in the region. Thank you so much.